Cheers, honey, do black rose. Let's hope this let's hope this works. Uh, anyway, I uh, uh, do black rose. How the heck are you? I am on the whiskey whisper, at least for the purposes of this video. Anyway, I've got something here called uh, Padraig's Rebellion, uh, Pochine, uh, an American version of a uh, triple distilled copper pot still, 100% 100% malted barley. Think about that for a second. At 115 proof, oh, it ain't playing 100% malt. This is, it's basically an unaged 100% malted barley. It is an unaged single malt whiskey. Is what I have in my hand. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant. But it, so I've done a version of a uh, of, of, of an old fashioned, what we'll call a white old fashioned, because I'm using an unaged whiskey. So I've got two ounces of that whiskey. I've got one ounce of some homemade simple syrup. It is a, uh, but it's not just a plain simple syrup. It is a, uh, it is a, a lavender orange. So I use some some lavender petals along with some some dried orange zest uh, and some raw sugar to make a, a lavender orange simple syrup. So I got the lavender orange. So I've got two ounces of the whiskey, one ounce of the simple syrup. I didn't have my my gar I'm not at home, so I didn't have my typical garnishes to use. But my wife had bought some cherries. <laughs> so I dropped the cherry in there so I had some kind of a garnish. If I was at home, I'd probably use like a, you know, a lemon peel or an orange peel or something. But but it, but there is something in there. Figure I need some kind of garnish. Just, just a cherry, man. <laughs> just a cherry, baby. Just a cherry. Oh. So, uh, yeah. And, and old fashioned is typically served on the rocks. You're right. You're absolutely right. I'm not going to dispute that fact with you. Uh, but I do prefer a straight up cocktail. So I've, 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 I'm serving this one just straight up, which means I've got it very well chilled, but there's no ice in the glass. I probably will do one more old-fashioned before we leave this place but I'm gonna I'm gonna take it down a notch <laughs> but I wanted to try one with this I've been using uh, I used a, a, an American malt whiskey I've used the Madeira cast finish rye and I want to try one with this pachin to do a white man out. So even though this whiskey is unaged, it is rather chewy because again, it is 100% malted barley and it is at 115 proof, which is why, yeah, I, I did put a, a full ounce of simple syrup to balance her out just a little bit. <laughs> Ooh my wife's taking her clothes off. Or, putting them or she's putting them back on. I'm not sure what she's doing. I'm not sure what the hell is going on. But then again, I usually don't. <laughs> I'm usually left clueless, and that's kind of how I like it. <laughs> the less you know, the better, man. <laughs> as a husband, as a parent, yeah, you know, you want to act like you want the information, like, but you really don't. And there's a line in the movie, A Mystery Alaska, where the, the husband busts in on a mom and daughter having a rather intimate conversation. And he's demanding, he says, I want to know. And he says, I demand to know. And, and finally, the wife, who's just had enough, says, I swear to whatever, if you don't leave right now, I will tell you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. So, and then he walks away. But we don't really want to know, but we have to act like we do. <laughs> we don't really want to be in charge, but we have to act like, well, you know, we kind of want to. <laughs> You know, I'm not paraphrasing that line a little bit, but basically, if you don't leave right now, I swear I'm going to tell you. Because <laughs> she's trying to finish the conversation, he's interrupting. That's kind of, as fathers, is what we do. We interrupt conversations thinking we're helping when we're really not. <laughs> we mean to help. It's kind of our business. You know, we want to be helpful. We want to be in charge. We want to solve the problems. That's what as men, as fathers, we want to do. But, but quite frankly, most of the time when we're butting in, we're just, you know, we're just butting in. We're not helping the situation. <laughs> A lot of times we're just trying to feed our own ego and be in charge. And, and we're best off just to back off and let the situation resolve itself. Like this particular person did. His wife told him, if you don't leave right now, I swear I'm going to tell you. And he, so he wisely walked away. <laughs> Uh, 
Picked up this glass from Restless Spirits yesterday. I did buy two of these. I was only going to buy one, but I decided to buy two because they only come in. It isn't cheap. I'll be honest with you. It's not cheap, but they only come in the uh, in the in the three seven fives. They don't come in a seven fifty. So I really wanted two bottles. I wanted to kind of experiment with it. Just kind of put one away. I've got a couple of friends I want to share some stuff with, so I wanted to bring this one bottle over to kind of share with them. Got a couple of good friends back home. <laughs> Kind of like, you know, whiskey compadres, beer compadres, too. It's funny how our circles kind of change as we get older. Uh, some folks have that need to keep the childhood friends with them from beginning to end. I'm not necessarily knocking that. I just have never been one of those folks. I mean, I, I in some ways, I kind of admire them. However, in my case, I mean, I've outgrown them. <laughs> My childhood friends. I mean, my interests aren't the same. Most of the childhood friends that I had, uh, I mean, including the best friend I had growing up, who was even the best man at my wedding, is is it, 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 he's a nice guy. There's nothing wrong with him, but he's one of those guys that never left high school. So I mean, if I was to talk to him today, the first thing he'd ask is, uh, "How much do you weigh?" Because <laughs> yeah. every time when I was in my thirties, forties, uh, that's what all yeah. How much do you weigh? First question. Why? What the fuck is in your business? Because, I mean, it's that, 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 that bizarre high school mentality, right? So, I mean, yeah, I don't have that. I've never had that gene to try to hang on to high school friends. I think people grow as you get older. There's no reason to hang on to those friends from back then. I, like I said, in some ways, I kind of admire folks that do. But then the other side of it is I think a lot of them are just trying to hang on to something that just doesn't exist anymore. So my friends list has kind of grown and then contracted as as I've moved from place to place. I picked up some good friends along the way, but again, sometimes things just outgrow themselves, right? So you know you don't necessarily not become friends anymore, but you move on. When you don't hear from somebody anymore, that's okay because we everybody's moved on. I've come to this weird intersection in my life where I'm starting to pick up friends again. <laughs> but I figure again at some point, and we're all going to outgrow each other again, and they're going to go their way, and I'm going to go mine. And quite frankly, I'm okay with that at this stage of my life. I'm, you know, it is interesting that I, I seem to be picking up more friends, but, uh, and, and, I, and quite frankly, I am enjoying it. I am meeting some great people with, with uh, the work I'm doing now and the things I'm doing, so I'm I'm really enjoying these these friends I have. But I, I but you know the the realist to me knows at some point they're gonna their lives are gonna change, go in a different direction as, as mine will. I think a lot of folks get too stuck in trying to keep things a specific way, and I think you just gotta keep growing as a person. And sometimes that means you know. Leaving some friends behind and picking up some new ones. It doesn't mean those friends meant less to you. It just means they meant a lot to you for that period of time. But now that period of time is gone. And that's all that means. I had great friends growing up where I grew up. I did. But when I left that area, I mean, I left nothing behind. You know, I don't have that... A specific nostalgia bone that wants me to go back to that period of time. I just don't have that. But through the magic of social media, I have reconnected with some friends uh, that I do want to keep connected with. And so I, I've always said that, you know, I don't understand the purpose of of the class reunion because anybody I wanted to stay in contact with, I, I would have. Right, but now it's even more accentuated by social media. Anybody I would have wanted to re reconnect with, I've already done that through social media, through Facebook, through various other social media. I don't need to go to a class reunion to see people I just don't want to see or don't even remember, to be honest with you, or don't even remember me. I mean, I wasn't very memorable back in high school, so there's no reason anybody would mem remember me anyway. So why do I want to go back to that? <laughs> Uh, and who I was back then, I mean, it, that person doesn't exist anymore. And I certainly don't want to go back to be reminded of somebody I used to be. 
You used to be so quiet and shy and this and that and the other. Yeah, thanks. And you're going to hear that from every freaking person at that reunion. <laughs> whatever you were, you're going to hear that. In, in whoever you were or whatever you were, you're not that person anymore. But everybody's going to remind you, hey, you used to be this, that, or the other. Uh-huh. Thank you. Uh, can I get another drink? <laughs> so, I just don't understand the purpose. But I guess some people do. They want to be involved in that. You know? I just, I don't, again, I don't have that that chip, that bone that makes me want to revisit things. Anybody I want to stay in contact with, I've, I've done that. Or, or reconnect with, maybe might be a better term. Anybody I want to reconnect with, I've already reconnected with. <laughs> I don't need to go to a high school reunion to reconnect with people. You used to be so quiet. You were kind of nerdy. <laughs> you were kind of a gumby. You were this out of the other. Yeah, thanks for telling me. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> so I, I, again, I just don't understand the point of those things. Because you got the people that were cool at the time that still think they're cool, so they're going to try to impose that upon you. <laughs> they still think they're the big shit, even though they're not anymore. And they want to try to impose that upon you. They want to make you feel small like you might have back in high school. And that, again, like I said, that person doesn't exist anymore. And I've had relatives like that too, to be honest with you. They'll call me a specific name that I that I was called as a kid and, and I'm not that person anymore. In fact I never was that person. And all they remember is they, they have a, a vague memory of somebody they thought you were. It's not even the person you were, it's their their recollection of what, what they thought you were. <laughs> so so, yeah, I mean, I've, I've kind of gone out of my way, to be honest with you. <laughs> Sometimes I do this, believe it or not, and I just go out of my way to piss people off because I'm just tired of it. I'll only take the shit for so long, and then I will just badger you to you and friend me. Even relative, I've been unfriended by aunts, uncles, <laughs> cousins, because I'm just I'm tired of people trying to remember who I used to be. It's not Again, it's not even who I used to be. It's who they remember me as. So it's their twisted little ignorant ass memory of who they thought I was for a brief moment in time. And that was like, you know, you know, 35 or 40 years ago. Jesus Christ, you're bringing up stuff. You're trying to have an argument with me, bringing up stuff from 35 to 40 years old, uh, arguing, well, you, you were this, you were that. So what? Even if any of that is remotely true, what the, does that have to do with this conversation today? <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind disconnecting with folks. I don't. I don't have a problem disconnecting with relatives. I would love to, you know, be friendly with all of them, to be honest with you. But if all you're going to remember is memories from 35 to 40 years old, I have, there is no reason for me to have anything to do with you. Uh, apparently, this drink is making me nostalgic. <laughs> I don't know why, man. Anyways, I, I can't. So, <laughs> let, me, let me wrap this up. And in conclusion, uh, Patrick's Rebellion Pachin from Restless Spirits. I got to tell you, I had a great visit at that distillery. They were they were fun. They were friendly. They were uh, helpful. Uh, they were knowledgeable. Uh, I have nothing negative to say about the staff there at Restless Spirits. Uh, I have nothing negative to say about the products. Or, or the products, staff, everything about that place is top-notch. I am Tom, <laughs> the Whiskey Whisper, Whiskey Vandals, prolific whiskey drinker, purveyor of wisdom, man. All right, good guy, slice you.